of the house of the Lord when he walked into the tabernacle of God. Not, all, not everyone got to see this, but I'm sure word got out. But when he would look up at the ceiling, he would see a cherubim with his wings outspread and looking down upon him. And I'm sure in his mind he was thinking, you know, God has got this. Yeah. God is covering me. Yes, his eye yes, yes. is on me. Yes. Aren't you glad this morning? Just Amen. like the Lord, he saw, he saw those those disciples struggling in that storm. And he walked to them in the midst of that storm. And I'm glad he spoke to that storm. Amen. Oh, yes, yes. And I pray this morning that God would, would speak to the storm in your life. That the God of peace would bruise Satan under your feet shortly. Amen. 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 The God of all peace. Only God can give us the peace that we need this morning. And I'm glad that He gives it freely. My God is a, a good giver, isn't He? Every good and perfect gift, the Bible says, cometh from above and there is no variableness of turning. God's not wishy-washy this morning because all His prom the promises of God are yes and amen, amen in Christ Jesus. Amen. He promised us peace and we can have it. And we need to say like David said when God told him all these properties belong to him even though he didn't see it and still was in the enemy hands. David said, it is mine. Yes. It is mine. Yes. And this morning, peace is ours. And we claim it. We receive it. Yes. And we claim yes. it. Yes. And I want to say this morning, Satan is under our... I don't know if you felt that or not, but every time it come out of my mouth, I felt my feet just to move. Ooh. He's under our feet this morning. He is a defeated foe. This communion which we take, which is in remembrance of what He did for us, says that Satan was defeated yes. 2,000 years ago. Amen? Amen? And he's the same yesterday, today. Can you yes. give the Lord a praise? Yes. Offer him this morning. Amen? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Amen. Praise God. If you have your Bibles this morning, I want you to turn with me to the book of Hebrews, to the 12th chapter. And uh, I've, asked, I've asked the Wednesday night church class to uh, join with me in fasting. I've asked to read Isaiah 58 and I'm trying to kind of go over Isaiah 58 on Wednesday nights. The purpose of our fasting and there's some promises of fasting. One of the, one of the promises of is when we fast unto the Lord that our, our, uh, our vision would be clearer it would be like the daylight sun that, that uh, would be, begin to see things and, 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 you know, things get cloudy sometimes. And, and basically what fasting is, is is really just drawing closer to the Lord. Fasting and prayer. You know, Jesus says some things. The disciples, His church, couldn't cast out those demons and devils. Don't think that there's not demons and devils still in this world because there is. And uh, Paul even says there's a messenger of Satan that's been bothering me. And I pray that it would be removed. And the Lord says to me, my grace is sufficient. I'm still, I'm going to preach about that grace this morning. That still is sufficient for you and I this morning. Amen? Amen. Because God has invited us to His table. The devil wants us to back away from the table. Wants to interfere yeah, I hate when somebody calls me when I'm eating. If, if, if I don't answer my phone, it's because I'm probably eating or doing something else. But I'm not going to answer my phone unless it's an emergency. I don't like anybody to disturb me from my eating. And I and it's the same way, you know. Uh, and it's amazing to me how that you can determine to draw near to the Lord to fa and fasting and prayer and how everything in the world, I mean, it's a... You know, if you just want to get somebody to take you out to eat, just, just declare that you're going to pray, pray and fast. <laughs> somebody invites you out to eat, probably one of the best meals you could ever eat. And But, you know, and it's amazing. I was telling Neil the other day, you know, it, it, it's amazing that the very first temptation, very first temptation had to do with food. Right. Think about it. Food. 
People can say what they want to. There's a lot of addictions. There's all kinds of addictions. It's just a, it's a, it's a sin nature thing. It's, and people can get addicted to just about anything. I want to be like Paul's bunch over there, where he says, and I forget who it was. Says these have have addicted themselves to ministry. Amen. If I'm going to be addicted to anything, I want to be addicted to the table of God. I want to be addicted to the ministry of reconciliation. I want to be addicted in that way. Amen? Amen. And I, 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 want to, I, want to, I want to have that feeling. I can't wait to get to church just to see what God's going to do. Amen? That's what I want. And so that first temptation was was the tree looked he, it was all about eating. He said he'd give them all them trees to, to eat up, but that one, you know, but the old devil stuck around that one tree, you know, and enticed. And, and it looked good. You know, everybody thinks the devil comes as a wolf. And he does come as a wolf sometimes. He comes as an evening wolf, the Bible talks about, but the Bible said he comes as an angel of light. He comes in a appearance of goodness sometimes. It's good. You know, Saul in his mind, when God gave him commandment to destroy the Amalekites, he said, and when uh, the prophet Samuel came to him and he heard those cattle and sheep just a, just a mooing, and I, what a sheep, they're bad, yeah, they're bad. <laughs> and when he saw those, he heard those, he said, what are these? And Saul said, well, I did destroy the Amalekite, but I, I did keep this one because he, you know, he probably could help me out in my kingdom. And, and just, you know, we can make a sacrifice of all these animals. It's a, it's a shame just to kill all these things. But you see, God always has a reason for everything. And Saul disobeyed God in a good thing. I mean, it, within reason, yeah, you could reason when you said, why destroy all that? But God said it. You see, God said it. Kind of like my mama said, I'd say, Mama, why do I got to do this? Because I've said so. <laughs> and there were repercussions for it. But it was a good, what I'm getting at, it was a good thing. You know, the Bible says there's a way that seemeth right or seems good to a, to a man, but leads to destruction. Yeah. And I think what fasting and prayer will do will help us in our discerning of spirit, discern what you know what is good, what is what is bad, because there's some things the devil will throw out there. I mean, for instance, Jesus being tempted in the wilderness, you know, he done fasted 40 days, he was over his fast. He fasted 40 days, and the devil said, What did the devil tempt you with? Food. <laughs> Back to that addiction thing, you know, I think the toughest thing to do is to have your appetite in check. You can do without a lot of things, a lot of things people get addicted to. You can do without that. You can do without, but you, you gotta eat. You gotta eat, right? Death. <laughs> but fasting, and he tempted Jesus, and Jesus tempted him. That was a temptation to Adam, but our, our Adam says, no. Nah. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Do you know every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God is food for your spirit? It is food for your spirit. Matter of fact, in the, the children of Israel, in the wilderness, you know, God gave them manna. God gave them food. God rained it down upon them. It came upon the dew of the earth, and they would gather every day. And on the seventh day, they would gather twice as much. And by the way, spiritually speaking, we are living in our seventh day, or, or at the edge of our seventh day. And and the Hebrew writer says, "How much more?" As we see the day approaching, 
Ought we to be gathering? We ought, ought to be gathering together. We ought to be exhorting one another daily. We ought to be gathering in the manna, listening to what God is saying. Because what God is saying is worth more than anything anyone earthly could say. Amen? It's more valuable than Trump words. It's more, especially more true. Never mind. I'm not going to get bitter over this. The words of Jesus. And I'm telling you, when we begin to fast, and when we begin to pray, seek God. I'm going I'm to get to this scripture here where it says, seeking diligently. Seeking diligently. Looking diligently lest any man fail of the grace of God. But God gave them manna. God took care of them in the wilderness. He, you know, it's like, you know, Daddy was talking about Grandma. And I was just thinking about Grandma this morning. I said, you know, my Grandma and Grandpa, they were, they were poor by the standards of the world, but they were rich in faith. I, I didn't see them as poor. I'm going to tell you, my grandma could take hamburger, mix it in with crackers, and put some gravy on it. And I, 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 my mind still remembers them, them hamburger steaks she used to cook in that old iron skillet. She could take day-old bread and she'd make uh, uh, bread pudding. Thank you. I love bread. All those things my grandma cooked for me, I remember and I love them today. She used to cook a pot of butter beans and I don't know what she put in them butter beans. Man, they were so good. But They may have been poor and didn't have a whole lot of things. They lived in a trailer over here. I remember, you know, we lived in George Brees Apartments, lived on the south side of town. And, uh, Man, Grandma and Grandpa, I can't believe they would let us walk all the way to Salito's uh, Groceries, what I believe what the name of it was. It was. I mean, it had to be a half a mile away, walking down the road. And my little, my little brother Gary, walking down the road. Go, Grandpa sent us down there to give him a, uh, you know, a pound of bologna. I remember that old thick red, red yeah, line bologna. Good stuff. I remember them old Jack's cookie jar. I mean, <laughs> all that stuff. I'm, I'm thinking about food now. I'm talking about fasting. I'm thinking about food. <laughs> but food is good. But Grandma, she loved God. And man, she, she was always had something on the table. Oh, she always, I, she never went without a roof over her head. She had food on the table. She had clothes on her back. She had the Spirit of God live. She right. had the love of God in her. Always felt love. Grandma, you, you can always tell Grandma loved you because this is what she did. She, that's what Grandma did. But she was just full of the love of God. I, I can't even imagine. When Danny started talking about Grandma not even wanting to go to church, you know, I don't want to go down there with that bunch and listen to that bunch. But baby, I'm going to tell you something. Something got a hold of her. I said something got a hold of her. She might have been hearing the song we just hung. His eyes are on the spirit. And the spirit of God touched her heart. And I'm telling you what, she ain't never, ever been the same. Right. Right. And I can't, ever, I can't imagine. I can't imagine my grandma being so against God and the things of God. Then I look at my own heart, raised in church. And, mm, I was telling somebody the other day, I was watching a movie called the, uh, you know, the, generation, the Jesus revolution and these hippies man, this pastor's preaching he invites these hippies to church and all the people says we ain't coming to church to bring them hippies in here he said well the door swings for me in here and also swings for you going out <laughs> the man of church just grew and, and, and the Jesus revolution in the 70's man just grew out of California it just grew and I was telling somebody that, you know I was a hippie I was a hippie, man. I had hair down to here, beard. I, I remember that. I remember that. That that was me. I was cool, man. I could dig it. But 
And I'm going to tell you, somebody was fasting. Somebody was praying for me. And something got a hold of me, and I know what that something is. It's the power of the Holy Ghost. And it's keeping me alive. Hallelujah. 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 Neil said something the other day. We were, I was helping Neil with, with some, some wood and all, and he got a, a splinter in his finger. And I know back in the day he probably would have said some ugly words over there. But I said, you know what? And I, and I, I shivered because, man, I know what it's like getting something up under, in your fingernail. You know, that, that hurts in there. That's called a quick. But you know what? The Spirit is. Paul calls the Spirit quickening. It makes us alive. I said it makes us alive it and it makes us well. Amen? The quickening of the... But you had to be quickened. You were dead and trespasses and sins, but you had to be made alive. Come on. Yes. Fasting and prayer. You want to draw near to God? You know, Paul, the, the writer of the Hebrews is writing to these, these Hebrews because they had been under pressure to go back to putting sacrifices on the altar, living under the old Judeo system, and they had no spirit of God in their life. Because if your faith is in the wrong thing, the wrong object, the spirit won't make a lie. The spirit won't do his work. He only operates because when your faith is in that right place. That's, that's the reason it doesn't work. When your faith is in yourself, when your confidence is in you, you're not going to see the Spirit working. But when our confidence is in Jesus, and the Hebrew writer says this in, in verse 14, he says, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Follow peace with all men. Everybody says, well, I'm a, I, I want to live in peace. I'm going to tell you, I, I can't. Peace doesn't mean I agree with everything. I don't, I, my kids were doing things and I said, I don't agree with that. I love you, but I don't agree with you. And, and the Bible says, and follow holiness. When when you're following holiness, you're following the Holy Spirit. Because Romans 1, 4 says that God declared Jesus, the Son of God, by the resurrection of the dead according to the Spirit of holiness. So the Holy Spirit is called the Spirit of holiness. He's also called the Spirit of grace. He says, follow peace and holiness. He says, looking diligently, looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. And of course, it's going on talking about Esau and Jacob. Esau traded. Here we go to the meal again. Esau traded his birthright, which was the blessing. He traded his birthright for a bowl of beans. But you know when you're hungry and you ain't got nothing to eat, you feel like you're about to famish. But the thing of it is, is he valued those beans more than he valued the birthright. Matter of fact, the Bible says he despised his birthright. And he accused his brother of stealing it from him. But he didn't want it anyway. The only thing Esau wanted was a blessing. He didn't care anything about spiritual things. And when he went before his father, his, you know the story how Jacob, I mean, uh, Esau, Isaac was deceived. And the, and. Isaac spoke the blessing over Jacob. And Esau found out about it. Said, Dad, is there not 
He said, I can't, I can't, I can't change what I've said. I've already pronounced a blessing on him. It's a perpetual thing. Because I said it, I spoke it, it's going to happen. He said, is there not a blessing for me? See, he wasn't interested in the birthright. See, I'll tell you the difference between the spiritual blessing. The Bible said the, the, bless, the blessing of the Lord, it makes rich and it adds no sorrow to it. A blessing. A blessing is like Elijah when he was going through a famine and God sent ravens to feed him. I mean, say during a famine time, that was a blessing. Yeah. Right? But God dried up the creek and told him to go to the widow's house because there she would sustain him during that famine. God had prepared her heart to do so. She obeyed the prophet of God and she made a meal for him out of a barrel that was basically empty and fixed to be gone. She was just going to serve her son and her and they were going to die. That was a blessing. But the blessing, the blessing is like the blessing that Jacob had that when Esau, robbed, I mean when, when the, his uncle Laban robbed him, spoiled his wages, mistreated him, he kept popping back up. You see, a, a blessing might dry up. A blessing might diminish. A job might fall apart. But because you have the blessing, I said because you have the blessing, it's not just a blessing, but it's the blessing. And it's the blessing that causes a blessing to come to you. And when you're hooked in to your birthright, when you're hooked in by faith to your birthright, and I'm telling you this morning, every one of you that have been born again, your confidence is in the blood of Jesus, you have a birthright this morning. Yes, amen. And the devil wants to take you away from that birthright. He wants to fool you with a table of this and a table of that. But your birthright is this. Is that you can come to the table of God anytime you want to. Right. Like Jesus said, He said, come and die. Yes. Come and die at my table. Yes. I told Neil that what we're doing when you're fasting and you're praying is you're trading your table for God's table. Amen? Yes. When we fast and pray, we're saying, your word is more valuable to me than the food I eat. This is food. You can't grow without food. Those children of Israel, even though God was feeding them every day with manna, the Bible said they despised it in their heart. And in their tents, they grumbled about it. And they crave quail. Is there any meat? And God miraculously, miraculously sent quail and gave them meat to eat. I mean, so much that it was a mile. You could walk a mile in every direction and there was quail on the ground three feet high. It fed them for a month. Quail. I didn't know where it was going to get, but the wind, God caused the wind to blow and it blew them quail. And they ate Another place says it, when it was between their teeth. God sent a plague and they started to die. It says He gave them their request. That He gave them what they asked for. But He sent leanness in their soul. Leanness in their soul. Leanness in their spirit. I'm wanting us to get so hungry for God. Amen. The other day I was, I was working out, and I don't know how the conversation came up, but we were talking about some some of the old timey foods we used to eat, and, so, and in my mind, somehow in my mind, 
There's a little ice cream bar that I used to eat when I was a kid. And I couldn't even remember the name of it. But it was so good. It was chocolate coated. It was had a banana cream flavor and cherry in the middle. It was like a, it was like a sundae. And it come in a pot form. And I, I, I got to thinking about it. When I got home, I got to longing for one. <laughs> I wanted one of them old ice creams that I used to have. And I searched diligently. I searched the world over looking for true love. I searched the world over. That's what the internet is. It's the world over. If it's in Japan, it'll tell me. I searched that in, trying to find that ice cream bar. And I, I couldn't find it because I, I, I didn't know the name of it. So if you don't put the right information in, you won't get the right information. And I'm putting an old-fashioned ice cream bars in the 60s. And man, I got to watching all them ice creams come by me. And I was fasting that morning. <laughs> and I was watching all them ice creams, man, and good humor bars. And man, I was, oh, oh, that's so good. It looks good. And finally, finally, Somehow I found it. There was some place that says, if you've lived on the south side of town in the 60s, you'll remember this. It says, I remember them, them bars that had the banana, and she gave me the name of it, Coquino's Purity Ice Cream. I found my treasure. Coquino's Purity Ice Cream. Remember that. <laughs> Coquino purity ice cream and I looked it up because my hope was this somebody still makes that and if I have to order it UPS or whatever I want it I want that I just I want that so I looked it up couldn't find it it ain't there it went out of business way back yonder on the south side of town, there was an ice cream factory there that made that ice cream. The elderly guy died, and they don't make it no more. Somebody says, well, you can try this. It's kind of similar to it. But I did try that, and it's not similar to it. But what I was looking for is not there anymore. It's, all it is is a remembrance to me. It's just a memory. I can't taste it any longer. I can't have it any longer. It's a memory. And I got to thinking about that. You know, sometimes with us, if God is just nothing more but a memory, we can talk about, well, I had, a, I had an experience with God way back yonder in the 60s. But if that's all you're having, you're not going to make it. Because God wants us to draw near. But I'm telling you, that is gone. That is yesterday. But my Jesus was yesterday. And it's good It's good to remember things. It's good to remember good times, good things. But it's not just yesterday. My Jesus is not just yesterday. Yes, my Jesus on. is today. Yes. I said my Jesus is yes, today. He's a very present help in a time of trouble. I yes. He's the same yesterday. He's the same today. And he will be. I'm glad he's going to be like he is tomorrow. He's the same one who watched over the sparrow. And he's still watching over me, Brother Neil. Hallelujah. He's yes. still watching over us today. Yes, he is. And I, don't, I can face my tomorrow because I know. Yes. I know. Yes, I know. I know. Yeah. He watches yes. over me. Yes, he does. Yes, Just as that priest entered into that temple and he could see that wingspan, David says he covers me with his wings. Yeah. The one thing that I desire more than anything that I may dwell in the presence of the Lord. Yeah. Let not thy spirit Depart from me.
He's the same yesterday. Didn't he really get to the meat of my message this morning? This, I'm telling you, and it's hard to ask the Lord to help me because this week I've been like a sponge and just soaking in. So I can be squeezed out this morning for you. You know, back to what James says, he said, if you'll draw near to the Lord, you draw near to the Lord. He will draw near to you. He, he's already done what He's going to do for you at the cross. He said, if you'll draw near to me, I'll draw near to you. And I was thinking, these little precious great-grandchildren that I have, I can look at them. I, I look at that little Ellen. She's just so lovable and adorable until you really get to know her. <laughs> yeah, a little deviousness in her. I'm praying about that. Some of my past in the <laughs> And I love her, and I, I could just eat her up. My little, my little Eastern, I just, I love him so much, and then he acts up, man, I want to, but I love him so much. And little Aaron, oh my goodness. I love these great grandkids. I love my kids. I love my grandkids. I love my great grandkids. But when I'm looking at them from a distance, I'm longing for them to come and get in Papa's lap. I don't want them out there. I want them here. You get that? And that's where our Father wants us. He wants us sitting on His lap. Getting so full. Like Mary who said at the feet of Jesus. So she had chosen that good part that won't be taken from her. God wants to do so much in your heart. God wants to do so much in your heart. Yes, and he your is. table become, if your heart become a table. And God wants to put so much on your table that others can see it. You can, you can, you can dine on it. You know, when we sing that song, look what the Lord has done. So, sometimes memory's good. We go back and say, you know, God help me out of here. God help me out of that. Why am I even doubting? Why am I even afraid? That's right. God has never let me down. I mean, it might have come down to the last dime or the last penny. But He ain't never quit and He ain't never let me down. And so God fills your heart full of good things, testimonies, and helping you out, strengthening you up. He fills your, your heart. Your heart will come. That's what God told me one time. He said, I want your heart to become a table. Yes. And you can't feed others from your table until you have fed yourself. That's right. That's right. And I'm telling you, my God is so good. Come on, let's come around this table this morning. Come on, let's, this, this is the table of the Lord. This is the table of the Lord. A communion table. We call it, we call it a communion table. 